one of those topics is one that you and I have really dove in on over the past year or so about this topic. And it seems like this past week, it has really come to the forefront of the baseball world. And it is arm injuries. And there have been a slew of arm injuries around the league very recently in terms of Spencer Strider, Shane Bieber, Framber Valdez, but you know, even longer than that, then you get into the Gary Coles, Jacob DeGroms. I mean, it seems like time after time, people are going down right now. We've, we've had the talk, but you know, I'd, I'd love to dive in and on it again. What, what do you think is the reason behind this? Is it one particular thing you can point to? Is it a culmination of things? If you had to pinpoint one thing, what would you say it is? Yeah, I've been talking about this for 10 years when it first started and the um, kind of the introduction of high velocity spin rate and analytics, right? Analytics came in the game to, and their slogan was 10 years ago, they may not admit it now, but their slogan was, we're going to put players in the best position to be successful. We're going to give them information and we're going to allow them to be um, really utilize their skill set and, and we're going to keep them healthy. Well, you've never heard anybody talk about that since. You haven't heard anybody talk about why, the root cause. Everybody comes up with these nonsense excuses that mean nothing. And they get people to look the other way when the root cause has been going on for 10 years. You cannot, you will not be able to stay healthy uh, if you throw the ball as hard as they're throwing it and spin it as, as much as they are. Now, I do not blame the player whatsoever. This is the reward, reward system they are in. I've been banging this drum for so long and now people are now people are looking at it like it just happened and that the pitch clock is the reason that's nonsense. Anybody who has never put a ball in their hand that talks about something they don't know about is nonsense. Now I will trust a pitcher who has thrown a million pitches and he tells me something's wrong with the baseball four years ago. I'll trust that because he's got the ball in his hand. If they can't get a real good grip and I'll trust that. And so there is really the, the root cause has always been there. You cannot throw a ball at 100 miles an hour and sustain that for five to seven to 10 years. Yeah. And people just they don't want to talk about it because they realize that what they started 10 years ago hasn't been successful in the area of keeping guys healthy. But if I'm a player today, I'm, my hands are tied. I got to get drafted. I got to get looked at. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to these entities that promote and, and have definitely crack the code on throwing the ball hard we've mastered throwing the ball hard and spinning it really really tight <laughs> yeah but we've not even come close to being able to be honest to say that these arm injuries are not linked to that and listen my era and the era before me we were paid to play we train to longevity for marathons. We've talked about this at nausea. And now all of a sudden, a few people come out and say the pitch clock is, is the reason guys are yeah. getting hurt. That's why I can't be quiet anymore. And that's why I'm passionate about all these players have no choice. What are they supposed to do? If the reward system is X and you don't get punished for not pitching, then, then I'm going to keep trying to do the same thing and ask for different yeah. results to happen. So that's when you get, I don't have hair. But the little hair that I have. What? You don't? Up, I don't. Believe it or not. <laughs> and when people want to throw that out there and just see if it sticks and then people write about it without any data to back it up, that's that's my been my biggest passion since I've been out of the game is I talked about it in my Hall of Fame. I talk about it everywhere with youth sports. No one's listening because the reward system and management has not made a necessary adjustment to address it. And so if they're not going to make the necessary uh, uh, assessment to address it, this will continue for the rest of time before we know it. We're going to run out of every great arm that has ever thrown a baseball. So I, I talked about this the other day as well and said that I, I thought the pitch clock conversation was more of a short-sighted conversation that, that needed to be had. It, it feels like right. that's just right in front of us. But so do you think, do you think that has anything to do with the last couple of years i know the root and, and i we're very much so on the same page with, yeah. with you know like the, the arm's just not meant to throw the shit out of the ball every single time and spin right. it as hard as you can every time that's the root of it do, would do you think the pitch clock has maybe accelerated it to any degree or do you think that's a non-factor 
I think it's in, in the scope of things, it's a 10%, maybe 20% factor. And, and some people just have not adapted, but here's the deal. Let's let every pitcher throw it as hard as they can and take as long as they can to throw it. And let's just see, first of all, the games will be five hours. Second of all, we'll just see if they stay healthy. My bet will be zero chance. So the reason the pitch clock came into play is guys were taking so long to execute. The game was suffocating and it was losing attendance and fans. So when the pitch clock comes in and the data shows guys weren't even getting to 18 seconds, the reason they shaved two seconds is data showed it wasn't even a factor. Yeah. And, and when three to five pitchers get out in front of it, they're telling you something that's about to happen that has no relevancy and data behind it. So listen, I get it. I know they're in a tough spot, but it's a, it's a small spoke to the wheel. The root cause has been forever for the last eight years. This has been a trend w- w- working in the wrong direction. And now all of a sudden something comes along. And we want to we want to we put that on it. No, I'm sorry. Doesn't hold water. Well, John, then this is the hardest question I'm going to ask you, because we've talked about this ad nauseum and, and we both agree. But what what is the answer? I mean, you the pitchers are incentivized. I, you know, when, yeah. when I was in the minors from 2013 to 17, all you would hear from an organization is I, w- this guy needs to be throwing 95 plus we're not drafting guys unless they can touch 95. We want them to throw it as hard as you can. Look at these analytics. You spun it a little bit faster doing this. And that's how they get up to the big leagues and have temporary success and then get paid. So yeah. we, what do what do we do is the frustrating thing because they're incentivized to do it, but then they're getting hurt doing it. I mean, well, in, inevitably there will be a time where there's a rule change that affects philosophy on this, meaning the game has changed because rule changes have caused clubs to either decide to change the way they play or not. And that's really what's going to end up happening because nothing is really shown that it's going to self-correct. This is all on management. I'm sorry. It's all on management and what they want out of their players. And so if they think that there's enough arms that they can suffer the injury rate that's happening, they're going to keep doing it. But in my opinion, down the road, if there's a rule change that inc- that incurs the team to look at it and go, hey, we might have a competitive advantage if we ask our starters to go a little bit longer. So let's look at a different training mechanism. But here's the deal. If everything in life, you're addicted to the outcome that has been what you've norm- known forever. If you're addicted to strikeouts and 1.9 ERA and 2.1 and you only get to pitch when you're healthy, then that's what's going to happen. We have to get used to a higher ERA, more innings, if that's the way they want the trend to change to keep guys in the game. We know for a fact doctors have made this absolutely a non-negotiable. You cannot throw the ball this hard for this long and be successful. And these guys train to learn to throw it harder. Now they might have to train to learn to be in seventh gear, yeah. eighth gear. So that's that's the point. It all falls on the reward system. You're 100% right. I, I just – I don't know the statistics behind it, but I can tell you around the time I was high school to college age is when it really became popular. Now, just so everyone knows, throwing a ball overhand is not a natural arm movement. And what I do know is around that age is when I saw people start picking up weighted balls bigger than a baseball, throwing them backwards, throwing them as hard as they can into a wall. And my mind, without any statistics behind knowing the the science behind it or any of that, knew this can't be good for for your arm in the future. It just can't be. And and we've seen, I feel like it's all tied into each other. There's no doubt. And look, again, if if I were to just somehow – be a young John Smoltz trying to make it in the game today, I would not be able to be stubborn to be able to throw at 94, 93, where I was comfortable. I would be forced to throw 98, 99, which therefore based on my body composition, I mean, I'm based, I'm, I'm like Gumby anyways, things fall apart. I would not have a very long career. And here's the part I don't understand without naming entities and without calling people out. Why is everybody so eager to crush the person who speaks truth? Right. We're in this world where there's going to be people who are going to attack this conversation and say, well, John Smoltz is still living in the 1980s. No, I want the guys that are talented to be able to have as long a career as they possibly want. And that is just not happening today. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3-0 or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213-537-9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest and we have a lot of fun. So hit that subscribe button.